Welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral, everybody, America's, America's Parish Church. I'm very glad you're here, and I wish you a blessed feast day of your founder, St. Josea Maria Escriva. Father Bolin and, and my brother priests, women and men religious, and especially you, beloved members of Opus Dei, I welcome the opportunity to offer Mass this evening on the feast day because it gives me the chance to thank you, to thank you for your wonderful vocation, your charism, your presence and witness here in the Archdiocese of New York. I'm very familiar with so many of the consecrated lives that you lead. I'm very familiar with the good work of of priests and spiritual direction and serving as confessors. I'm gratefully aware of your apostolate at St. Agnes Parish, uh, right smack dab in Midtown Manhattan. St. Jose Maria would be happy. And I'm just so gratefully aware of the silent day in, day out witness that all of you give to the pursuit of holiness, the, uni the response to the universal call to in the apostolate of your work. So I thank God for the gift that you are to the Church Universal and in a particular way here in the Archdiocese of New York. We're blessed to have this beautiful gospel reading that Father Boland just proclaimed. And I think you will agree with me that this gospel episode from St. Matthew's Gospel very much capsulizes the extraordinarily rich insights that St. Jose Maria Escriva left to the church. Let me just mention four of them, four of them from this evening's gospel that I think you will agree uh, arise from the charism of St. Jose Maria and Opus Dei. Number one, would be the mandate that Jesus gave to the apostles in the boat, cast out to the deep. The Latin, duke in altum, cast out to the deep. Like many phrases of Jesus, that has a literal meaning and that has a symbolic meaning. The literal meaning, obviously, was Jesus was telling Peter and the apostles, get out there, there are fish out there, all right? The spiritual meaning is deeper. And the fathers of the church and your founder saw that mandate of Jesus to cast out to the deep as the call, the call to plummet the depths of the soul in the pursuit of perfection. Deep, deep down within us dwells the most blessed Trinity. Deep, deep down within us is the very life of God in sanctifying grace. And when Jesus tells us to cast out to the deep, he means pursue perfection, pursue sanctity, look into the depth, there's where the deep is, look into the depth of your soul and nurture there the flame of God's life within cast out to the deep, the call to perfection. I was very moved a couple weeks ago at a meeting, a meeting in Washington, D.C., where Archbishop, Archbishop Jose Gomez, the Archbishop of Los Angeles, it was a meeting to try to bring together maybe divergent um, thoughts or movements within the church in striving for unity. And Archbishop Gomez very powerfully said, look, we are all called to be saints. And that pursuit of sanctity, that desire to be a saint, is what brings unity to all of us, all of us. Archbishop Gomez knew what Jesus was talking about. Archbishop Gomez knows what St. Jose Maria meant. Do you remember? when Pope Benedict XVI assumed the chair of St. Peter. It was his first address as Bishop of Rome. And the world, the world was expecting an extraordinarily cerebral 
an erudite theological sermon from this towering intellectual. And Pope Benedict XVI captivated the church and the world when he said simply, I call you to holiness of life, which means friendship with Jesus. I call you to holiness of life, with me, me, which means friendship with Jesus. There's number one, cast out to the deep. Number two, a second, a second conclusion from the gospel that so rings true in the teaching of your founder. Those apostles responded somewhat reluctantly responded to the mandate of Jesus to cast out to the deep in their work. He called them as fishermen to do their jobs. Cast out to the deep. That was their work. That was their occupation. They were fishermen. And he sanctified that work, that vocation, because it became the agency of a miracle in the miraculous draft of fish. So did St. Jose Maria encourage all of us to find sanctity, to cast out to the deep, not in some exotic apostolates, not just in faraway missionary lands, not just in cloistered convents or sanctuaries of cathedrals, no to cast out to the deep, to pursue perfection, to go after sanctity in our professions, in our work, in our labor. An insight that seems so simple that it is downright profound. So he, anticipating the great teaching of the Second Vatican Council, would be the poet of the universal call to holiness. Everyone is called to holiness and sanctity. Everyone is called to the pursuit of perfection in whatever walk of life we find ourselves. Insight number three, the move to repentance. St. Peter, St. Peter was so moved by the miracle St. Peter was so embarrassed by his initial reluctance and his sluggishness in his obedience to the command of Jesus to cast out to the deep that he fell in repentance at the feet of the master. Leave me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Oh, how often did St. Jose Maria call us to conversion of heart and repentance of life. How often did he recommend the examen? How often did he re uh, recommend acts of sacrifice and penance? How often did he encourage us to the very sacrament of penance? He knew we were all like St. Peter at the feet of Jesus. Leave me, Lord, for I am a sinful man as we are moved to contrition, to conversion of heart, and to repentance of life. Like St. John the Baptist, whose nativity we celebrated last Sunday, it was Jose Maria that prophetically called the world to the conversion that characterized St. Peter in this evening's gospel. And finally, number four, <clears throat> the gospel ends with Jesus calling those fishermen Come, follow me. Come, follow me, which words that the church has always interpreted as the summons to discipleship, the invitation to discipleship. Jose Maria would agree that the premier vocation in the church is the call to discipleship. First and foremost, we are called to be disciples of Jesus. If we don't have that, no other vocation makes sense. The call to discipleship. 
George Weigel, the celebrated biographer of Pope St. John Paul II, tells the story that after he had completed his Witness to Hope, his magisterial biography of John Paul, as most authors, he left the introduction to the end. All right? So the book was done, most of the work was over, but he didn't know how to title the introduction. He said, what should I call the introduction? And he said it, he wrestled with it for hours. Should I call the introduction the pole, since John Paul II exuded that sense of Polish identity? Should I call the introduction the thinker, since Karol Wojtyla was such an astoundingly astute thinker? Should I call it the preface the philosopher, the theologian? Should I call the preface the priest? Should I call the preface the bishop, since he so cherished his years as Archbishop of Krakow? Should I call, should I call the preface the confessor of faith in his standing up with courage to Nazi and communist atrocity? Finally, 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 George Weigel came upon the answer. I will simply entitle the preface the disciple, the disciple, because first and foremost, Karol Wojtyla, John Paul II, saw himself as a disciple of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the most important identity in his life from which every other description, charism, and vocation flowed. Jose Maria, Saint Jose Maria would agree, the primacy of discipleship. Those four points I hold up to you this evening, everybody, as we celebrate his feast in this most fitting way, Duke and Altum, the call to interior perfection, the call to perfection within their work, their labors, their professions, the move to repentance of St. Peter, a model of us all, and the primacy of the call to discipleship.